He's always trying to break you down, to make you sad, to let you in the darkness from the very beginning when he declared his enmity to mankind. And throughout the history, he caused evil and destruction between every nation. And today, he became much powerful than any time else. A new world order, a world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. We begin to see the climax of a major change in society, the climax of a new world order. And we begin to see a type of integration between information technology and trade. We begin to see the economy, politics, culture, and ideology being transported simultaneously from nation to nation. And with this technology, with the ability to transport ideas, the very value systems of people, the way that they eat, what they enjoy to do, how they enjoy recreation, their racial concepts, their culture, their ideology, being transported all around the world, a type of globalization. And with this boom in the information technology, and with this major event that takes place, now it comes to a culmination and it starts to reach a high point. And so the innocent people, we look at this and we say, what is going on? What is happening to the world that had so many different varying views, different nations, different ways of approaching things that can complement each other? Now we see politics, is stripped of real power. That the economy governs all social exchange. We see that the states serve the financial powers, power structures. That the real power is no longer in the hands of the generals, but the real power now switching to the hands of the people who run the economy, to the banking systems. And then we see that politicians play the role of public relations offices only to control the masses, either by lulling them to sleep or by terrorizing them. And then we see that the masses of the people become helplessly preoccupied. Their lives are now bombarded with a series of cultural events. And these cultural events start to become the most important things in their lives. The World Cup, the Major League Series, the rugby, the cricket, the hockey, the tennis, whatever the sport may be, we see whole nations coming behind sports and the national heroes become sporting people, even in Saudi Arabia. Even in our own Muslim countries, the national heroes are now the soccer players. Who kicks the little ball inside of a net? He becomes the hero of the nation when people are dying on the ground. But yet we become preoccupied 
with this. And it becomes a type of indoctrination happening to us. And with the use of powerful music playing on our emotions, with videos now being taken to the furthest extremes in the planet, people's thinking processes are changing. People are now in love with the superheroes, even confused about their own identity, trying to change themselves, change the color of their hair, change their eyes, change the way they dress, change the way they talk on a global level. And then we see drug addiction reaching a point that humanity has never seen before. And after traveling to over 36 countries, looking at the Muslims and being with them, I have found that in all of the communities that the young people are, are being confused with drugs. It is pouring into our countries. No matter what form it takes, cocaine, LSD, psychedelic, depressants, put you up, put you down, confuse you, but create a false world and give you a false dependence so that you become dependent on the chemical. You forget about Allah. Your God becomes the pusher. Your God becomes the chemical. And so creating this dependency amongst the masses of the people. This is a dollar bill, which is the uh, now devalued dollar bill. And on the back of the dollar bill, there's a seal on this side. It's called the Great Seal of the United States. That's what it's called. It's their seal. Now behind the seal, this is actually what is behind the Great Seal of the United States, is a pyramid with one eye. Now the one eye is the sun god Ray, which is where we get the word Ray, sun rays. It is the sun god, same Mithraic character, and he shows up again and again. This is the Masonic god of the, the Ray. Thirteen five-pointed stars, and when you draw lines between them, you'll draw a six-pointed star. If the hexagonal star is lifted out and placed over the image of the pyramid, its points indicate specific letters in the Latin inscription surrounding it, which are thought to be an anagram. Inside the American Dictionary is the word anagram, which is the intentional scrambling of the letters of a word to conceal the real word. So if you re-scramble, you get Masons. This is how we know that the Masons originated the drawings for the Great Seal of the United States. This search for concealed meanings in the iconography is not confined to the imagery alone. It is claimed that the number 13, the most ominous number in Western tradition, is hidden throughout the symbols on the $1 bill. They point out the repetition of the symbolic number 13. There are 13 leaves on the olive branch in the eagle's right claw. 13 arrows in the left claw. 13 stars above the eagle's head and 13 bars and stripes on the shield. Count the feathers. You'll notice that there are 32 feathers on the bird's left wing and 33 on his right wing. This is understood to refer to the 33 degrees of masonry introduced by the Supreme Council of the Scottish Rite, America's most prominent Masonic order, whose national HQ is in Washington. If you look, you'll see the pyramid is built except for the top. It's built except for the top. The eye is suspended above the top. It hasn't come down yet. Because they believe until they finished the Masonic project, which is the, the, what they say on the bottom, Novus Ordo Seclorum, and then Annuetta Chapters, he is pleased with our project. 
In other words, the God they believe in is pleased with our project. What is the project? This is the question. What is the project that this God is pleased with? The project is literally the secularization of the world. To completely strip the world from religious beliefs. This is the project. And that is why it is called Novus Ordo Seclorum. A new secular or worldly order.